Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zara of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're continuing with our Queen's Game Decline series with the so-called Albin Contra Gambit. The Albin Contra Gambit we have started recently. First we have seen this beautiful Laska trap that is possible in an early stage of the game and then we have seen also then some common mistakes by White and Black that are also possible uh, in the opening stage and then uh, we have seen really really a beautiful game uh, that was played by Stockfish with the black pieces in the Alvin Control Gambit where Stockfish really destroyed its opponent in this sharp sharp opening. So today we're continuing our series uh, with the so-called normal line. Uh, the normal line is actually a cho choice by White. White can uh, choose to play the normal line then in the continuation of the game. Uh, uh, many of these ideas that White can um, uh, White can play I think are very very annoying and if you don't know what to do I think again you could destroy it. You could get destroyed in an early stage of the game if you don't know uh, where the tactical sequence is going so that's why in this uh, video i wanted to introduce to you also the normal line uh, that white can play but also how black should counter play this idea so let's see again what is the album counter gamut and what is then the normal line so uh here after moves uh, d4 of course d5 and c4 which would be of course the queen's gamut we have then the queen's gamut declined with the so-called album counter gamut with the move e5 and many times white is playing this idea which is actually the best way here to to play the game we have d takes e5 uh here you have to play d4 uh we have now again a beautiful uh expansion in the center of the board this pawn on d4 is now our main strength but it can be also our main weakness in the continuation of the game because white will try to get rid of this very annoying pawn on d4 what we want to get from black's perspective is also to get rid of this very annoying pawn on e5 so white and black have some advantages in the center of the board but uh of course in the continuation these advantages have to be attack uh, if you don't understand many of these ideas uh, so far um, and please also check out our series from the beginning because some of these ideas will not repeat probably today today as i said we're doing only the normal line of the Albert cover gambit so after move d4 we have here the move knight f3 and after move knight to c6 now comes the move uh, the normal line move which is now the common move a3 and the idea is clear white wants to get an expansion uh here with the move b4 is trying to kick away uh, your knight with the move b5 and then of course to get rid of this very annoying pawn on d4 and you could choose many things now you can play i think also knight to e7 would be perfectly fine but i simply don't like this line although it's also one of the suggested lines by top engines in my opinion uh, after move knight to e7 um, the game bec becomes really really clear because there is i think only one line that both of these um, players will play then white will proceed here with the move b4 knight to uh, g uh, knight to g6 and then of course after bishop to b2 white continues to pressure here around the square d4 then something like knight to e5 knight to e5 knight takes e5 and not, then with e3 i think uh, white could have really really good game here because the only way to make progress here is to play then uh, here uh, bishop to e6 because because uh, of course this idea is not working d takes e3 is a uh, disaster move because you lose the knight here on e5 of course first we trade off the queens and then uh, we can take out the knight here on e5 so this is not possible so the only way for black to make something out of this is to play here bishop to e6 to continue the pressure here around the square c4 but here after bishop to d4 knight to c4 and then with queen to c2 i still think that white should be much much better here especially because of the fact that this bishop is centralized it's not allowing here uh, this bishop to develop uh, the knight is endangered uh, also we have a beautiful space advantage here on the queen side and still the knight can move of course on a natural score uh, that bishop to e2 kingside casting maybe to get the rook here on d file i guarantee you here a common uh, a calm game here for white so as i said I simply don't like the, this line so because I've been asked now many times here on my channel uh, what should we do? Should we go into these lines? In my opinion, they're not so good. In my opinion, after move uh, A3 that White is preparing, we should go with the move A5 uh, like the Stockfish engine did. We have seen these lines by the Stockfish engine. A5 is preventing immediately uh, here the move B4. And in the game that we have analyzed by Stockfish, uh, its opponent played the move B3 and then uh, this was simply two passive stock 
stockfish get uh, bishop to f5 knight e7 knight g6 so stockfish had had a beautiful uh piece activity then in the continuation of the game played also bishop to c5 so had as i said a beautiful beautiful setup that's uh, the most important thing to recognize so uh, after move a5 many times uh, white will play the normal move e3 and this is simply the best way now for white to proceed because i think it's a must move because there are not not so many great ways to attack anymore the pawn on d4 there are opportunities of knight to uh, knight to d2 and then knight to b3 which we will cover now in the continuation of the video this is also an idea uh, for why to make progress but after move a5 as we said uh, here the normal line would be the move e3 now we have to play bishop to c5 bishop to c5 is a must move because uh, we're again protecting our d4 pawn and now the game becomes really wild in the in the center of the board because after e takes d4 this would be now uh, the normal continuation there is now a tricky part of this um, variation because you have to take actually with the bishop if you take out with the knight then um, uh, white will get out with the bishop and then many pieces will be traded off and probably white will continue the game uh, with an extra pawn so that's why you have to play with the bishop although in the beginning it's a strange idea because you don't want to give up your uh, bishop pair you don't want to give up uh, uh, your bishop pair in an early stage of the game because it's still an open game and you know uh, bishops love the open game but here i move bishop to d4 the problem for white is that the white cannot take the bishop immediately uh, because we'll simply take queen to d4 queen to d4 knight to d4 and notice now there is a fork idea uh, here on c2 again also the b3 is weak we can also follow uh with the move a4 knight to b3 bishop to e6 is an opportunity even if i don't know may, maybe white plays now the annoying move uh, rook to a2 uh, this rook should not be here of course forever because we can try now knight to e7 even if maybe white fixes the pawn structure with the move f4 we can sp still play bishop to e6 and look at this now now for instance b5 would be threat knight to f5 is also very good uh controls the life scores we can play maybe sort of a blockade h5 h4 uh cementing our bishop uh knight on f5 and it will have i think a beautiful beautiful central position so as i said even knight to uh, c2 knight to b3 are working so many many uh positional uh ideas here by black so this is something that actually uh, as we said the white should not do white should not take out the bishop immediately many times white will play normal development uh here with the move bishop to e2 and i found really a beautiful game that was played by evgeny barev uh, and alexander morozovic in this um in this position after move bishop to e2 here um alexander morozovic played knight to e7 uh we have kingside casting kingside casting two and here after move knight to c3 here alexander morozovic i think played a beautiful idea he played simply bishop to c3 and look at the pawn structure now we have now b takes c3 what we have gained here is a position where uh white has many many structural weaknesses we can notice first of all when it comes to pawns uh, c3 is weak c4 is weak a3 is weak also the e5 is a long-term object so we're attacking still the e5 pawn because in the beginning of the video we have said that the e5 is a target it's a clear target for us so that's why we should not forget about it we should not maybe attack immediately this pawns the c3 c4 a3 there will be still time to attack the pawns, but i think we should attack first this pawn this pawn on e5 because it's much much more important to grab this pawn and now in the continuation after move knight to g6 for instance bishop to g5 was played by barev and now queen to e8 here by morozovic and um, this pawn is basically unprotectable anymore so uh, i have to say uh, morozovic lost the game but in one particular moment the position was really equal and then he made really blunder so the evaluation here is, is about equal in this position i think this is a position that we can play uh we can take out this pawn then uh, we can also uh, try to attack this pawn so we can include the bishop uh, here on e6 although uh white will have also some fun here probably on the b file so as i said this is a position that you face many many times in this types of structure so let's see now different ideas uh, again uh we can face this move a3 uh as we said with the idea to uh, get an expansion with the move b4 now with the move a5 now we can uh, see many times this idea so i think we have solved now all of our problems after move e3 again i'm pointing out bishop to c5 after e takes d4 we should take out with the bishop bishop to d4 would be the main line but okay let's see now different opportunities here white is not playing the move e3 white will play many times the move knight to d2 and we'll try uh, here to attack um, the pawn immediately uh, with the move knight to b3 if you uh, play a4 a4 immediately then it's not good i think 
take because b4 will st still happen and after a takes b3 knight to b3 uh, again i think white has solved all of the positional problems and then uh, it's simply now time to take out the pawn on uh, d4 bishop to c5 is not possible because the knight is controlling the score so that's why after move knight to b2 uh, knight to d2 pardon me uh, you have to play now a different maneuver you have to defend your pawn on d4 in a different way so a4 is not my recommendation in one particular moment maybe this move a4 would be beautiful to paralyze uh, the, the queen side but so far let's stuck to our defense of the d4 pawn you have to play knight to e7 now because if knight to b3 then we have a beautiful move knight to f5 and this would be now the main line uh, in order to protect the pawn on d4 what the white could do is now to play the move e3 so white is playing a similar idea like we have seen in the barev morozovic game e3 but now uh, with a different move or the, with the pressure around the square d4 now it's time to take this is perfectly fine because after d takes e3 we have queen to d1 uh, queen to d8 which will probably uh, be white continuation now we should take out with the knight we should not take out with the king although i found a game in the database where king to d8 was played but uh, it's not so good i think because after f takes e3 uh, here you can maybe try to kick away uh, the knight but now with knight to d4 the knight gets cemented and even if you try i don't know bishop to c5 this will be probably the continuation knight takes c6 b takes c6 and look at this now you have a weakened pawn structure uh, these are all weaknesses a4 is weak uh, c7 is weak c uh, c6 six weeks uh, so as i said uh, here uh, white is continuing the game still with this extra pawn uh, here on the king side you could maybe try here king to f2 and i think everything is perfectly fine here for white so as i said this is not something that you should do after you move queen to d8 you have to take out with the knight so probably again white will recapture the pawn on uh, e3 but notice now it's a different story okay uh, still white is up a whole pawn but uh, these are double pawns and at least in this continuation we did not weaken our pawn structure here with b takes c6 now we should simply get our knight back uh, attack the e5 pawn further in the continuation probably white to try bishop to e2 and now with bishop to d7 this is now a very important move i think that you have to know because bishop to d7 is protecting the knight in a beautiful way because we are not risking to get this pawn structure uh doubled here on the D on the c file because after the move knight to d4 uh, we can simply pr continue our pressure with the move bishop to c5 and now after move knight to c6 bishop to c6 so this is now a move order that you have to memorize i think again this is a decent position for black uh, look at the bishop pair aiming here towards the king side knight is very active still probably white has to play something like king to f2 but it's a di different story i think we can even for instance now as i said in the middle of this video a4 would be a beautiful paralyzing move never ever allow here a b3 move we can maybe even in some occasions try rook to a6 rook to b6 and maybe to cement our rook here on b3 attack maybe the b2 pawn so many many uh beautiful attacking opportunities for here for black because what we can notice now in this variation in this line we have created at least some spaces and uh, that's why i like in the beginning this move a5 more for instance than this move knight to e7 so you see now i think again i i really really think that this is this is playable although uh you have to still struggle because white is up upon so let's see now different uh, continuation again we have this idea a5 knight to knight to d2 instead of this move e3 and after move knight to b3 again knight to f5 what you could face maybe is this annoying stuff uh with the move uh, g4 uh to attack your knight on f5 which is of course controlling the d4 square but still this is not time to panic you should simply proceed with the normal knight to h4 and here after move knight to d4 we can simply take knight takes f3 knight takes f3 and now after trades of uh, queens we can simply take out this ball so this is also not something that white should do here black should be much much better so uh, the g4 is a temporary attack it's a temporary um, tempo but uh, then in the continuation of the game it becomes a long-term weakness so here bishop to uh, f4 could be the continuation in order to have a protection of the e5 but here i think we can play normal move bishop to c5 targeting and again here the uh, f2 pawn that's why your opponent will probably have to escape here to e1 and now bishop to f3 is also perfectly fine because after bishop to d4 look at this both of these pawns are weak the pawn uh, the uh, the pawn on b2 the pawn on e5 maybe uh 
but white could play something like e6 uh, f6 e6 bishop to c7 but still this pawn is hanging so here again black is much much better so as i said this is something that you will probably face many times uh, uh, maybe this idea g4 um, this is something that should not bother i think uh, here black because here knight h4 is still an opportunity you didn't lose any time because the queen is protecting this square so still we have some beautiful maneuvers with the knight so let's see now different examples so uh, uh, here we can have again this idea knight to d2 and we have played already in move uh, a5 now white could go into this fianchetto variation which will cover more in the continuation of, of our series so the fianchetto variation is actually in my opinion the main line of the alban counter gambit an early fianchetto by white but now this is a delayed fianchetto so still i would count this as a normal line of the alban counter gam gambit after move the g3 uh, here we can see Simply expand here on the queen side which is perfectly fine with the move a4 and again i found the beautiful game played by the top grand master alexander marozovic because uh, he was really a master of this opening and here his opponent was lee Wang liam uh, as we said because white has played the move g3 white did not play the move knight to b3 it allows us now here to get some spaces again this move a4 is so important because it's paralyzing here the whole queen side so here the continuation after move bishop to g2 uh, here we have the normal idea knight to g6 king said casting and now knight to e5 knight to e5 knight to e5 lake one liam tried knight to f3 knight takes f3 bishop to f3 so the game is more and more simplified and after bish move bishop to c5 again black gained equality which is i think perfectly fine when we play uh with the black pieces still uh i would rather be white uh, pardon me black here because we we'll still have this annoying pawn that is controlling of course the fourth rank this is also a very annoying pawn in the near future we can occupy some weak worse maybe here b3 d3 bishop to f5 maybe is an opportunity first we have to play something like c6 but as i said here uh alexander morozovic played uh, a drawish game and eventually the game ended in a draw uh which which we should not forget because this is still sort of a dubious opening this is still a sharp opening if you know know what you're doing uh you will probably get destroyed as i said here uh, alexander morozovic with the black pieces played a draw against another top grand master uh, like one liam so okay this will be it uh, in our study of the normal line uh we'll see now also different opportunities for white and from black we'll see also the uh, most common fiajeto variation and then the ideas uh, behind this time this kind of stuff if you want to see more about the album counter gambit please check out our study so far here's the link of our whole playlist and uh, if you want to see our whole queen's game decline studies please check out also our series the queen's game declined with some other uh, defenses like the chigorin defense we have seen also the tarash semi tarash defense we have seen also the harvard's attack for instance from white's perspective so as i said we have seen beautiful beautiful stuff in the queen's game decline here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course